So let's look at how to solve the Cauchy problem for the heat equation here. So the the basic ansatz, um, so may, maybe I haven't used that word before. Let me write it down. Ansatz. So this is a German word for uh, sneaky idea or, or clever starting point. Or maybe useful insight something like that. So the basic idea is to um, look for dimension, uh, dimensionless quantities. So there's a theorem in dimensional analysis called the Buckingham Pi theorem. And it states that any physical law uh, can be rephrased in a way that relates purely dimensionless quantities. So in other words, by rewriting things into certain ratios, you can cancel everything out so that it looks like uh, a relationship just between these dimensionless quantities. Um, it's a bit of an odd idea, and, and the idea of how to use it in a practical way is a little weird as well. But I will, uh, I'll try and see if I can put together a, a, an example video uh, down below um, that will explain how it works. But for now, I'm just going to say um, that you can use the Buckingham Pi theorem to consider um, looking for a solution W that satisfies uh, W divided by uh, the initial condition is some function of the ratio x over square root 4kt. Because if we divide w by u0, then the corresponding quantity would have uh, no dimension. Uh, all, the, all the units would cancel out. Um, and beca that's because w is in degrees and u0 is in degrees um, <coughs> uh, of temperature, that is. And Similarly, this, this expression, x over square root 4kt, uh, is, is also dimensionless. So I should be writing this. So this, this guy here is dimensionless. And this guy here is also dimensionless. OK, so the idea is to start from something that looks like this. So let's suppose that w is some function of z where our variable z is um, x over square root 4kt. OK, well, then we can apply a chain rule to differentiate this guy and, and see what we get. So um, we need uh, w sub t uh, minus kw sub xx. So w sub t. So uh, that'll require us differentiating this, and we'll see that's f prime z times z sub t, which is going to be um, minus 1 half times um, 1 over square root 4kt uh, times x. Um, <coughs> and oh, sorry, t cubed times x. Uh, times f prime of z. The derivative for w, or sorry, for x, is a little simpler because each time you uh, differentiate, it's just going to kick out a copy of 1 over square root 4kt. So if we do that twice, we'll get 1 over 4kt uh, times f double prime. Okay. So then w sub t minus k w sub xx uh, is going to be minus 1 half x over square root 4 kt cubed f prime of z um, minus k times 1 over 4 kt f double prime of z. And this is supposed to be equal to 0 because that's what the heat equation decrees. So after doing some cancellation,
this can be rewritten as the ODE <coughs> F double prime plus 2ZF equals 0. Oh, sorry, 2ZF prime equals 0. And so this one can be solved. So this is, uh, uh, in terms of F prime, this is a first order linear equation. And it's also a separable equation. So either of those will allow you to solve for f prime using those techniques. Uh, and you see that f prime uh, of z is some constant times e to the minus z squared. And so once you have that, finding f is just a straightforward uh, integration, no fancy uh, ODE techniques necessary. And so you get C1 integral from 0 to Z e to the minus R squared dr um, plus some other arbitrary constant. And so this tells you that uh, W, our solution for the Cauchy problem with the unit step function, um, is c1 0 2 and then z recall was x over square root of 4 kt um, and we had that constant so now we can look at the uh, boundary conditions um, <coughs> or, or actually rather sorry initial conditions um, and so we have that for x negative, um, u0 is equal to 0. And so if, and so plugging that into wx0, the solution that we've just found, what do we see? Well, so this is going to be c1 times the integral from 0 to, and now x is negative. So as t goes to 0, the magnitude of, um, uh, of this term right here is going to blow up. But the uh, fact that x is negative means that it's going to go to minus infinity, um, e to the negative r squared dr uh, plus c2. Um, <coughs> and when we have uh, x greater than or equal to 0, we have the whole equation with 1. And uh, so in this case, the integral goes from 0 to infinity. And we have still the rest the same. And so now from some other course, from a probability of statistics course, or maybe you did this one in Calc 2 as an example of the amazing power of the Fubini theorem with polar coordinates, you know that the uh, integral of e to the minus r squared across the entire real line is uh, square root of pi. So since we've just got half of, um, uh, half of it, this is going to be um, c1 times uh, square root of pi over 2 plus c2. And similarly for the first one, although take into account that there's a minus sign there, so it, when we flip the order on the integral so that it goes from minus infinity to 0, uh, we pick up a negative sign And so we have this 2 by 2 system of linear equations. Recall from the given boundary condition, the first one's equal to 0, and the second one's equal to 1. So we can solve that for c1, c2 to get that uh, c1 is 1 over root pi, and c2 is 1 half. And so our um, solution to this Cauchy problem is 1 over uh, square root pi integral from 0 to x over square root 4kt.
e to the minus r squared dr plus 1 half. So next to find the fundamental solution, we'll take this guy's partial with respect to x. 